It's the Taskmaster Podcast. Yeah, yeah. Taskmaster Podcast time. I'm Ed Gamble, host of the podcast, Taskmaster Podcast. Uh Yes, I'm available to write theme tunes uh, for anything uh, you care uh, to have a theme tune for. This is the Taskmaster Podcast. We are going to be chatting about the hit television show, Taskmaster. Series 11, episode 8. Exciting. Uh, Again, if you haven't seen it, do go away and watch that episode because we are going to get down into the nitty gritty. We're going to go through it task by task. We're going to be talking spoilers, baby. And we are going to be talking those spoilers with the brilliant Lee Mack. Yes, it's Lee Mack time. We have finally completed all of the current contestants on Taskmaster Series 11. We're going to be chatting to Lee about his time on the show, about what he enjoyed, what he might not have enjoyed, why he did the show, uh, and this episode specifically. It's another great episode. It's a great series, sort of coming to the end of the series soon, which is sad, but also exciting. Uh, As always, watch Taskmaster on all four. You can get the bleeped versions on there as well if you've got more sensitive ears in the house. Uh, And apart from that, I don't think there's anything to say. Oh, I'd say check out Lee's podcast. We'll probably mention it during the chat with him. Uh, But Lee does a podcast called I Can't Believe It's Not Buddha uh, with his mate Neil Webster. Uh, And it's great. It's about their first steps on the road to mindfulness, meditation and Buddhism. Uh, So go and check that out. It's on Spotify, iTunes... And look, this is probably the most overused phrase in 2021. Anyway, you get your podcasts wherever you get your podcasts from. So go and check that out. But let's crack into this episode eight of Taskmaster series 11, as discussed by myself and my very special guest, Lee Mack. Welcome, Lee Mack, to the Taskmaster podcast. Thank you, Ed. It's, um, It's always been a dream of mine to be on the Taskmaster podcast, and finally that dream's come true. <laughs> Ever since you heard about the Taskmaster podcast? Ever since I was a little boy. Ever since I was a little boy. I know you've been going on this podcast for a long time now. It's been many, many uh, years, yeah. Well, it's it's an absolute pleasure to have you on to, to, to chat about to chat about this episode and your your series in general, although you've just been telling me, just before we started recording, that um, some of your memories may have gone already of the series and what's been on telly. Well, it's it's been a while since we actually recorded it. and Yeah. So we recorded it last year, and then, of course, the children who, I should point out, sort of, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I like the show, I love the show, but they made me do the show because they wanted to come yeah. and see it being recorded because they, and we'll get onto yeah. this in a minute, they're obsessed with Taskmaster. Great. So they, um, they said, you've got to do this show, so I did the show. I thought, well, it'd be nice, wouldn't it, they can come along and watch it, but of course they weren't allowed to watch it because suddenly <laughs> there was a pandemic. So oh. that was a bit heartbreaking for them. So instead, I let them go to the recording of, not the record, the recording of the laughs where they play it into yeah. a cinema. So we yeah. can, because obviously everyone knows there's no studio audience with COVID. So they play it into a live audience in a cinema. Not quite sure, sure why that was, was allowed, but that's probably a different period <laughs> of time or something. So I yeah, went to I see think it, that. I think it was. Yeah. And then, of course, it's on the telly. So I'm confused about time and reality now about when anything's happened. <laughs> How did you find that not not having a studio audience as a man who's used to uh, used to panel shows and used to having those studio audiences? Yeah, it was. It, I, I tell you what, I felt like there was a, there was definitely a more relaxed atmosphere. You do automatically kick in when there's a crowd. You just something happens. Yeah. You sort of something happens. You just click in a bit, and I felt that there was it was more conducive to just relaxed chat mm-hmm. amongst ourselves. There was no difference between having lunch together and then talking in the studio on camera together it yeah. was all very calm because usually you do that weird thing where you're chatting to people beforehand you have a little bit of lunch with them or a drink how are you doing you're right how's, you, how's the kids yeah great great and then suddenly people turn into lunatics the audience is there <laughs> and go, but there was none of that i'm gonna say people i mean me <laughs> but, but it, was, it was very tranquil and calm it was like having a nice day out it was lovely it's, uh, yeah, it certainly has that feel, I think. But then also there's that thing of when something hysterical happens, you do all lose it together. And there is that, that feeling yeah. of everyone's lost their mind slightly. And also there's a massive advantage having no audience, which is the ego of the comedian can say, what I have just said was gold, but, <laughs> but, but no one laughed because there's no one here. So yeah. don't worry, it was gold. <laughs> the problem is, as I found, is when you've got like, 30 people in which we did for would i lie to you 30 yeah. or 40 people because 
When no one laughs at all, and there's 40 people, and you go, oh, I've got no excuse now. I can't pretend that was good, <laughs> because nobody <laughs> laughed. So actually, when there's no one in, you can delude yourself a bit. You know what I mean? That it, yeah, that it was good. That the cameramen would have laughed, but they're not allowed to. They're not allowed to, are they? Yeah. yeah they're not allowed to laugh. Well, it turns out they are allowed to laugh, but I just thought they weren't allowed <laughs> to laugh at my stuff. <laughs> So your kids are big fans of the show, like you say. Uh, and... I, I know everyone says these things, all my kids, are you, to a point of irritation. I mean, yeah. they, they, they watched... I mean, obviously, I'm a comedian, so the last thing I want to do is watch comedy in the evening. Right? Yeah. My, my attitude is, if it's not, it's not got subtitles and a child's been kidnapped, I'm not interested. <laughs> it's got to be miserable, really yeah. miserable. <laughs> and so the fact that, you know, I love Alex and Greg... But I'm not going to pretend that I was glued to Taskmaster any more than I was to any panel game. I just sure. haven't watched enough of those things because it's a busman's holiday, right? Mm -hmm. But this show was on endlessly in our house. And I, I mean, like, back-to-back -back episodes, whole series in one day, just endless. And then, of course, they reach a certain age where then the younger daughter grows up and then they want her to watch it, so they do it. Yeah. So they're on about the third <laughs> box set of the whole thing. They know everybody from that show and that show alone. So when I did a radio show with Sally Phillips, they couldn't believe that Sally Phillips from Taskmaster was here. <laughs> and I said, oh, was she in it? And they were like, what, series four, came third, or whatever. I've probably got that fact wrong. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you've probably known it. You're probably like my children. <laughs> but, so they, they know everything. And then, of course, it gets to the next stage where we had to then start making it. So they film it on a, on a phone and make episodes at home. So we have to take part. He edits it, the eldest child. We watched oh, an wow. edited version of the show that he's made. And yeah. the tricky little tasks he's made up, you know. Yeah. So and then the board game came out. <laughs> <laughs> I see this as a bit of a therapy session. <laughs> then the board game came out. So that, that's the whole new world of, of involvement in our house. Yeah. And then, of course, and then I'm in it. And it's like, it's just every second. I've done anything, it's finally over. And then I've got to come and do the podcast. I mean, when's it going to end? It's never, it's when? never going to end, Lee. That's when? it. I'm sorry, man. Um, so you had already done tasks before you did Taskmaster because oh, in a I was, I've been doing in a way you've been trained, you've been training for it, Lee. I've been training. I've been, I've, I've, I, had to, I think the one that they thought we were going to stop doing this was with Dad is you have to. There's something about having to walk to the end of the garden with a pencil, but you're not allowed to use your hands. And obviously, <laughs> put it under your nose and, you know, on your yeah. lips, the obvious one. Yeah. I slightly stuck it up my bum. Because I figured if... But, but, but the problem is to stick it... I mean, not up my bum, but I mean, like, clench. in the you cheeks. Can clench between clench. the cheeks, yeah. But it's quite hard to clench a pencil with it sticking... I mean, you can do it sort of... Pa if you do it parallel to the ground, it's yeah. not going to stay in there with a clench. No. Well, You've uh, got to mm. get it right in the cheeks, to the point of, some would say, almost entry. <laughs> it, it had to go quite in, right? And so you have to keep your shorts down. Yeah. Because So you're showing a bit of crack at your bum. And part of that was thinking if, if there was, and they'd be mortified, of course they'd be mortified. Yeah. That they'd stop this. They'd stop doing this. They'd say, right, we don't want to do this anymore because you're doing it to embarrass us. No. <laughs> Didn't work. We're carrying on. Yeah. That would have been great if... If the pencil task had come up in, in your series as well, you'd have been straight yeah. in there, oh, straight up oh. the bum. I'd have been like, done it, sent it, done it, <laughs> bought the postcard and used, used a diff an unusual way to write the postcard. <laughs> so you're sort of, you were aware, very aware of the show, but... Oh, yeah, I'm very aware of it, yeah. And I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to pretend one minute, it's just the kids that, you know, I slowly, I would find myself going... In the early series, oh, you, you got this on again, you know, and then I'd <laughs> walk out. And then the next series, it was, you got this on again. And then I'd stand and watch it a bit. By the time of the end, you know, I was sitting down with them and watching it and loving it, you know. But yeah. it was a, oh, I'm not going to lie, I haven't watched it four or five times per each series like they have. Yeah. It's Can't incredible. name all the winners. Didn't your, didn't your kids come up with a task for series 10 as well? It wasn't one of their suggestions yeah. in the series? Yeah, well, because they, they, um, they weren't allowed to come to the studio. Um, they were allowed to visit at one point because it was during a time when, when there wasn't a, a lockdown. And during the visit, an idea came up that I wasn't even privy to. They just had a chat with Alex at one point. Yeah. And then later on in the series, Alex said to me, we're going to use 
they come up with a really good idea, your 16 year old. So is it all right to use it? I said, yeah, he'd be so proud, thanks. And then when I told him, he went, my son went, that wasn't me, that was Millie. Millie's only nine. <laughs> <laughs> she may have been eight at the time. Oh, wow. I mean, that's, yeah, that's the kind of stuff they're producing for Taskmaster. <laughs> Random thoughts of an eight-year-old. <laughs> yeah, that's how I would describe yeah. Alex Horn's brain at, yeah, at any given moment, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they did. They did do it. And now you're going to ask me which one. I think it was something to do with a monster, like draw a monster with eight legs or something, and ten eyes, and, and disc you, you yeah, write it was down the monster, and then you have to interpret the description. It was a studio task, wasn't it? It was um, that you had to draw as you went along. Uh, with all the yeah. and all the features were sort of read out in a list, and then it's whoever gets the closest to it with all the features at the end. It was brilliant. It was a really yeah. good idea. Yeah, yeah, she was she was well pleased, and of course now it's all changed. She can watch it because you know, yeah, I'm, I'm 52, and I spent the last few years going filth, absolute filth. <laughs> which is rich coming from me, but when it's your own children <laughs> listening to it, but now they've got the beeped version, which is fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was intrigued to see how they managed to get around the Mike Wozniak hemorrhoid. Uh, Issue, yeah, whether they had to bleep anything there or they just had to sort of science, I suppose, isn't it? Well, it'd be odd to, to beep the noise that it made because <laughs> that would be a right cacophony of noise, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. it, that noise is unsavoury enough without adding a, anything else to it. You, know? <laughs> you must have been quite relieved when that noise happened because it oh, sort of erased, erased the memory of you uh, trying to lick a jelly off a table. So... I was absolutely delighted because not only did it erase the noise of me licking the jelly and it falling on the floor, yeah. which was a bad enough noise, I then, I've got the poppadom incident where I've got water and poppadoms <laughs> and it's just sort of pouring out of my mouth like a an elderly man in a care home. Yeah, well, you, you had an but, absolute meltdown there. <laughs> absolute disaster, but non, not, that's not, will, will they remember that? No. We all know what they're going to remember. Yeah. The disgusting... Mike Wozniak's anus. That's what we'll remember. <laughs> and it's it's like a blank check for me to do anything. Yeah. Brilliant. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, did you? I mean, did you enjoy the experience overall? Obviously, you sort of knew what to expect. Uh, but did you did you have a good time? Yeah. No, I really did. I, I did. Everyone sort of, you know, it's very unlikely that I'm going to come on a podcast you know, about Taskmaster and go, well, between me and you, it was one of the worst things I've ever done. We've had and, it. Uh, We've had that. abusive. <laughs> <laughs> but it's genuine when I say I absolutely loved it, yeah. I really yeah. did. It was it was great fun because, you know, the, the, there was a bit of pressure for me because the, the kids just said, don't, just please, right, all we ask from you, don't come last. Now, yeah. I'm not saying whether I came last or not, but all I will say is the bar was low for the ambition. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and and I think sometimes I come across as quite competitive on it, but I'm not competitive, meaning I want to win. I'm competitive about not coming last. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? which is even is... more desperate sometimes. I think. Oh my gosh, it's awful. What? It's so desperate. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, let's let's crack on with the the prize task this week, which was the most satisfying wobbly thing. It's an inter it's an interesting prize task. Obviously, set up at the beginning by Greg saying, if anyone brings in jelly. Yeah, they're getting naught points, and then the absolute onslaught of jelly at that point. It was basically from then on. It was just everyone brought in jelly with a twist. Yeah, um, I mean, not many wobbly things, are there? There's not not many, many wobbly, wobbly things. things. To be fair, I mean, I I talked about my belly, so I thought, well, it's my belly's wobbly. That's not jelly. But how do you bring your yes. belly in? You can't. I'll bring it. Is a jelly version. Yeah, so, <laughs> I thought so that was good. I, I think a lot of the stuff didn't get talked about as much as I would have liked because Greg was so angry that people had brought in jelly. Because I think the, the, the twists yeah. people had to the jelly were good. So Jamali's Rubik's Cube in jelly, I yeah. liked that as an idea. But the jelly, clouded by jelly again. Yeah, I mean, he said the most satisfying wobbly thing. And obviously Jamali's thought, what's satisfying, Rubik's Cube? What's wobbly? Jelly. Yeah. I'll put a Rubik's Bang. Cube in jelly. Done. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Talking of jelly and hot water, do you remember the task where there was a bottle full of jelly? Yeah. Um, and oh, you had yeah. to get all the Another jelly out. Undignified. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hugely right. undignified. You yeah. had to get the banana into the oh, bottle, but there was jelly, uh, there was loads of jelly in, in the bottle. Yeah. At one point, you um, got a blender out um, 
as if you were going to blend the banana up and pour it in. Oh, yeah. That's what everyone assumed you were going to do. And then oh, you nice. left the blender completely alone and chewed the banana up and spat it in, <laughs> spat it into the bottom like a Listen, big bird. I, I can, all I can say is when you when you get these bits of kitchen equipment out, they're never as simple as you think they're going to be. Are you? When you look at them, you go, "Where's the other bit? Where's the lid? Where's the?" Other? And it's never in the same place at home. Yeah. So if you come round my house for dinner, just know that I've probably chewed it and spat it out rather than blended it. It's a lot easier. As long as you leave the blender out, people think you've used it. And a terrible job chopping these carrots, Lee. There's teeth marks in them. <laughs> yeah, you'll often find my carrots and my potatoes are mashed. Put it that way. <laughs> Um, Charlotte went with the letter from her therapist about her wobbly self-esteem in a jelly. I like this. It was very Charlotte. It had a tinge of tinge of sadness to it. It's probably my favourite yeah. favourite jelly twist out of all. I, of them. I did like that. Yeah, that was good. Uh, is it satisfying? That's that's a good point. It's is a it satisfying, satisfying, but it's clever. Down, I like that. Was yeah, she was talking about her wobble. Yeah, I did like that. It was very good. Um, yeah, I do like probably... Charlotte. I thought she was fantastic on this. Yeah, was... yeah. Something She's about really it. good. Uh, someone pointed out. I don't know who it was. It might have been. Um, Sarah Kendall, early on in the series, was that she is the spitting image of Margot Kidder from um, Lois Lane from the original Superman films. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. And, biz- and bizarrely coincidental, after that was pointed out to me, I went to the toilet in the dressing room and staring back at me was Margot Kidder above oh, my no. toilet in the dressing room at Pinewood Studios. I mean, oh, the wow. picture of her, obviously. She wasn't, yeah. in the, she wasn't in the dressing room next door and there was a hatch. <laughs> uh, but she, yeah, she was the... She, I thought, that's weird, isn't it? And yeah. then I couldn't, I couldn't get that image of her being Lois Lane out of my head. So if they ever remake Superman, she could do that. Um, Mike uh, was the first person to not bring in a jelly, which I almost found annoying that he sort of broke rank. Yeah. Sort of let everyone He's down a bit. Mike, isn't he? I was yeah. fascinated by Mike. Oh, yeah, what a man. The, the most surprising thing about Mike is that he didn't turn up for work on a penny farthing. <laughs> <laughs> Dressed in one of those, like, strongman yeah. costumes, yeah. That's sort of what you expect him to, to call. He came in a normal car. I found that really yeah. surprising. <laughs> I thought he'd come, he's, he just, he, he's like he's from, I want to say a different era, but an era that's never existed. Yeah. Yeah, like a, it's like oh. a steampunk thing, like the past, but in in, yeah. in, a, in a fictional book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you suspect that if he if he hadn't, he was a doctor, wasn't he? Yeah. You, you suspect that when he was a doctor, he, he it was either do, being a doctor or a one man band, you know, with the big thing on the back and the <laughs> yeah, I can imagine him walking around with between the big... his knees. <laughs> He's great. Was like, it a very funny bloke, isn't he? Yeah, very funny. Was, was it he weird? Saved us all with his anus, which is lovely. <laughs> You're a very good team, I think. You sort of you you were on the same page. Like occasionally it went terribly, but mm. then, uh, as in with the, the salt and sugar task that you managed to screw up oh, quite quite just, dramatically. That you see, that's the problem. You have to. I don't think I'd watched enough Taskmasters to know. Yeah, you've got to be looking around the room. Um, so it was. Oh, it was three points for everyone on the prize task, which. I love it when Greg scores things like that because Alex is clearly baffled by it. He's like, three points for everyone, are you sure? Because there's almost no point giving anyone any points in that situation. Yeah, yeah but I do sometimes wonder when Greg gives out three points for everyone, is it actually because he hasn't been listening? <laughs> do you know what I mean? He thinks, oh, I wasn't listening. Yeah. Because he always looks like he's not listening. He always looks quite, like, you know, comedically, but he always looks annoyed to be there. Yeah. You know? And I always think he might be daydreaming, thinking about someone else. Yeah. And then he thinks, oh, I've got to judge these people. Someone's, I haven't been listening. If I give them all three, then it's the safest way of getting away with the fact that I haven't listened. Yeah, I think he sort of shut down when there were three jellies in a row. So he missed Mike's yeah. milk tooth, which I thought was quite good. And then Sarah's bizarre sausage of chicken meat. Um, yeah, that was which... <laughs> I mean, is that, is that pet food or is that actually for human consumption? I think it must be for human consumption. But it was one of those weird sausages that are in like a, it's in a plastic skin with little yeah. metal things I mean, holding it. The thing you usually see in pet shops. Yeah. Yeah, because at the end when I went up on stage, I give it a wobble and it broke in my hand, and I didn't wobble it much, <laughs> and it no. went right over instantly. It was like I just I've been fearful to go to the toilet ever since. <laughs> the whole the whole show seems to have been designed to uh, make you touch touch meat and dairy products, Lee. I know. Well, this is the thing. It. I, I'm. I at the t- time was a vegan. I've actually yeah. gone a bit soft now, and now I'm a now I'm more of a veggie stroke vegan. Yeah, 
And is I that because what, of the because, because of, of the yeah. batter? I suddenly I've been on Taskmaster, men realise I like the taste of wallets and eggs. <laughs> <laughs> So, so far, after me um, slacking anyone who brought in jelly, we've had two jellies. Next. <laughs> Charlotte! Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a bit personal, this, but obviously this show has taken its toll on my ego, my self-esteem. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah. And, um, <laughs> Sorry, Charlotte, you, you've brought a jelly in, haven't you? Yeah, inside is a letter from my therapist commenting on my wobbly sense of self-esteem. Right. Oh, here it is. A letter from a therapist in a jelly. Yeah. <laughs> task one. Uh, this is the, the poppadom task that we've been dreading talking about. Say the oh. word metronome between every tick of this metronome. You may not touch or stop the metronome. Also, you must blow up an entire balloon so it's bigger than your head. Neatly gift wrap the balloon and eat three whole poppadoms. You have five minutes. Your time starts when the metronome starts. The winner will accomplish the most tasks and miss the least metronomes. What a do long you know, task. You, what a long task. I'll tell you what, the, one of the most undignified things anyone can do is being filmed whilst a balloon pops in their face. It's never a good <laughs> look, right? But there's one thing worse than that, and that is to use that in the opening titles every week. <laughs> they decided to use yeah. a bit of me going, <laughs> like, every time the balloon pops. <laughs> there is a worse thing they could have used, though. Yeah. The tongue, the tongue, on the, the tongue on the table. The tongue would on have the been... table or the, the water pouring out of my mouth trying to eat the pop of Dom and drink loads of water at the same time or the mastication of the banana to try and get it in the bottle yes. despite the fact there was a blend of it. <laughs> There's so many things. And the spittle. There was spittle involved in one of them. A lot of, a lot of spittle. A, lot of a spittle. big string of spit in the, uh, in the jelly spittle. task. But, yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm 52. I'm 52 years of age. All these things that make me look bad at the end of the day, you've got to look good in life to mate, right? <laughs> I've got three children. They yeah. all want to watch Taskmaster. The last thing I want to do is mate and risk any more. <laughs> so the more spittle on show, the less yeah. chance there is of any more. It's a good technique. It's good to know there was a reason behind all that spittle now. Totally, yeah. Totally. It's so no one tried to mate It wasn't just because I've got no dignity. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, there, there wasn't much dignity flying around in this task. At one point, you uh, screamed, I have a BAFTA. I have a BAFTA. Yeah. And you, you couldn't really hear that, could you? <laughs> I no. was so full of popper dog. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah. I, but uh, luckily, Greg, Greg pointed it out. Do you, yeah. think this, do you think that might cancel out the BAFTA? I think, the, I think it's fair to say, you know, is there anything more undignified than a man on national television trying to stuff three popper doms in his mouth in a set amount of time while saying metronome? <laughs> yes, there is. He shouts out, I've got a bath <laughs> whilst he's doing it. <laughs> that tops the undignified stakes, doesn't it? But also, Taskmaster tends to win BAFTAs. So, if anything, yeah. you know, you might have got them another BAFTA by screaming about your BAFTA. That's a good point, yeah. I, just get, I was getting the subliminal message out there. Yeah. Has it been nominated for a BAFTA? It won, I think it won Best Entertainment last in the last load of BAFTAs, yeah. Did it? Yeah. It's Probably got beat BAFTAs, us. What a lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate insult. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine if we were up against Taskmaster for an award and Taskmaster won and the clip they showed <laughs> was me with spittle and masticated banana coming out of my mouth and Rob Bryden and David Mitchell looking at me just going... It's okay, yeah. just awful on so many levels. <laughs> um, Sarah had an absolute disaster as well. At least you completed things. You got four points. Um, Sarah, yeah, but the balloon burst and then she did, she did no tasks. One point. Disaster, which is, not, which is unusual for her. Yeah, she's pretty good. She's like, yeah. she's, I think she, it, she seems quite competitive. Mm. But maybe she's like me. She's competitive not to come last because she's got kids as well you see maybe it's her yeah. own I think we've of... had her we've had her on the podcast I think she fully admitted that she is competitive and she she wanted to win the series yeah. um, but then you've been called out as being a competitive one on previous have episodes I? as well yeah we tried Who to rank I? I think Charlotte might have said you were the most competitive maybe so, uh, ah, what does she know what she? <laughs> she's a kid she's a young kid <laughs> no it's weird yeah I suppose I suppose when when we play Taskmaster at home, with with either the board game or the or the uh, homemade version, it's nine. It's it's only about ten percent fun. It's yeah. ninety percent a competition. Yeah. As anyone will tell you, if they've got kids, kids kids don't do things for fun. <laughs> kids have to win everything. They're yeah. so competitive with each other. You know, they'll argue. They'll really argue about you know about 
the most inane thing, like that pencil, you know, well, bad example. <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair enough to argue about that. Yeah. But so that's sort of instilled into my brain now, the competitive yeah. nature of the game rather than the fun nature. <laughs> because I'm institutionalised in my own house. That is what Taskmaster has done to me. And I've paid for that. Paid yeah. for that institutional. Ization, if that's a word. I've I gone out and bought the produce to then yeah. affect me mentally. <laughs> and so. then to have to go and live that nightmare if, yeah, in real absolutely. as well. Um, someone who is not competitive is Charlotte, I think. Uh, and she had, a, she had a nightmare in this as well. Uh, she, I mean, she said metromone so many times. Metromone, um, yeah. Metromone, and didn't eat the. She didn't eat the poppadoms properly, and she got one point as well. At one point, it, saying, it I've, quite, "I've had I a mean, bit I of an I would challenge accident. anyone to say metronome over and over again, and not at some point stop calling it a metronome. Yeah, it's I think you. Hard. I think you did really well on that. I think you missed three metronomes, but I think you said metronome most of the time. Jamali and Charlotte had a nightmare saying it. Yeah, but he used his phone, didn't he? That was very clever. Or it, it was clever, but the the word he recorded was metromone. So he said metromone. Me, he's re, he said metromone and then played that back loads of times. And yeah. I don't. I, I mean, think I think he should, should have been disqualified. Have yeah, I, I think know. he should have lost I points. Know. I mean, I thought it was game over when I popped the balloon, but actually, I don't think it was because I had I had wrapped it. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. You done. Yeah. You, yeah. Because you blow up the entire balloon and then neatly gift gift wrap the balloon. It doesn't say it needs to stay inflated does it no it doesn't i mean there's so many but i learned my lesson about the, the whole gaffer tape and cellophane incident oh, i mean that you were I mean, livid about that i was livid. I still livid <laughs> we recorded it a year ago i'm still a part of me going, somebody says to me wrap your legs in cellophane and gaffer tape well, well then that must mean you've got to cover yourself in both hasn't it? yeah no I, I do see what you mean but it's all about those little tricksy things you can do. If you can we- wheedle your way around the words in Taskmaster, it's good. Yeah. Well, I'll let it go, though. I've not... I've yeah. not heard that <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, mean yeah. I should be concentrating more on the stupidity of the fact that I started with the gaffer tape <laughs> against my burst skin, not the cellophane. Yeah. Awful idea. What, what an idiot. I'm not very <laughs> astute, so that was lucky. Well, not anymore. No. I was an instant <laughs> waxing. I mean, I'd like to point out, for my own dignity... I've got, I've got hers where it matters. <laughs> you know, I'm not. I know what you're thinking. I'm like those freaks on Naked Attraction. What is that about? What, Naked Attraction? I mean, we watched it, I have to be honest, we watched it via Gogglebox. Oh, that I've only, I think I've only ever seen it via Gogglebox. That's all I, you need to see. That's all you need to see. Yeah. And has anybody got any pubic hair anymore? Or am, I the, am I the last one on the planet? <sighs> Well, it's, 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 I, I think if you be... know it's going to be on display, if you were going on, if they did uh, Naked Attraction Stand Up for Cancer, yeah, uh, and and they said Lee, we'd love we'd love you to come and do this. It's for charity, yeah, and they absolutely. guilted you into it. I'm telling what, you now, what you're doing with the what you're doing with the um, the hairs. manscaping, I'll manscaping. Tell you exactly yeah, what I'm doing. I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing. I'm going for extensions, <laughs> and so that when the when the thing lifts up and it shows my feet. You see yeah. a bit of her hanging down the middle. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I want people to go, good God. What's going to be happening? I want it draped on the floor. <laughs> I want to bring it back. I want to get back. I want everyone in the world to get it back. Come on. <laughs> what a hill to die on. The, the regrowth yeah. of the man the that brought pubic back hair. pubic hair. <laughs> That's why I'm growing my beard. It's a subliminal message. Metronome. 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 Metronome, metronome, metronome. Met- I knew I shouldn't have cut my fingernails this morning. Metronome, metronome, metronome. I haven't metronome, metronome. I haven't got metronome. The nerve, metronome to do this show. Metronome, metronome. Task two: Draw the best picture of a British animal. Each person must fill in one section at a time and may not look at the other section during that time. Every section must be used. And you may not communicate with each other in any way during the task. Best picture of a British animal wins. You have three minutes to draw each section. Your time starts now. So this is obviously a team task. Yourself and yeah. Mike. Well, you know that drawing game, a British you know, animal where you fold a bit of paper and you draw the. Extra, yes. Yeah. So I always remember you've always got to show them where you left off. You know, you put the little lines yeah. on to show them where mm-hmm. to join onto. I don't want to brag. That was my idea. The other team. That's good. They were all over the place. The thing looked they like were. You know, it was in an abattoir. I mean, there were bits <laughs> everywhere. Wasn't there? The head was on the left, the feet were on the right. An absolute mess. 
And yet, when Even, they built it as a toy, yeah. it didn't look too bad. No, because you can't really build their disaster as a toy because it would fall apart. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I would say that's a good lesson. If you buy your children a toy that falls apart, I say, see, that's what happens in life. Not everything's well made. Yeah. And that's what should have been taught to those three. The fact that should have been the lesson because it actually came out looking quite sweet. Their animal, it was quite it a sweet. It animal. was annoyingly sweet. Yeah, whereas ours yeah. had two heads. Yeah, yours was horrifying. Yeah, well, um, I couldn't work out at the end was it the head. You see, like, has he done a head? Because how many? <laughs> there's a lot of sections, isn't there? I go, well, what? What's... Yeah. What I really liked about it as well is you sort of came in halfway through and and said, well, the thing is, I don't I don't know what he's drawn now, so I'm completely in the dark, as if we didn't know yeah. that. That was the whole yeah. point of the task. Yeah, no, I do tend to, to sort of state the obvious. You know what I mean? I'm the kind of person that will say, yeah, the problem is it's very hard to say metronome when you're eating metronome. <laughs> go, yes, I know, that's the point. Oh, is it? It's you can like make this easier. We can make it a lot easier if we don't say metronome and we just casually eat in our own time. One, and one poppadom as well would be yeah, easier. It'll be, more, it'll be more relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I mean, yeah, in in the way they looked when they were built, I think they they were both good. But I think you're right. The drawing of yours was better, mm. which was the whole task, really. Uh, and I think once Mike sort of panic explained the feeding process of the feeding yeah. the young from one mouth and then eating in another mouth, I think that helped as well. Absolutely. That, that really helped. And I did wonder what that was. What was that? Was that a smile? What was it ever there for, that black thing in the middle of its belly? I have no idea. It wasn't, was even the on the, it, it wasn't even on the model, I don't think, the extra little mouse. I don't think yeah. it made the model. It was so I weird. I think he got confused. I think he perhaps started that thinking, we must be up to the head by now. I'll draw a yeah. mouth. <laughs> and then thought, how nah, can we be up to the head? There's about another five sections to go. <laughs> Never take a punt on a mouse. Just You should always wait. Wait for the mouse. Wait for the mouth. Um, and those, I believe, those little models are now in the... Toilets of the Taskmaster house. Are they? Yeah. So they the they same, all... Is that the same toilet where I <laughs> genuinely wiped my glasses on the task? <laughs> yeah. I, I looked back and I thought, that looks so set up. And it genuinely wasn't where I went in. Yeah. Pulled it off, wiped it. And I didn't want to, because I'm a professional, I didn't want to throw it down the toilet and flush the chain because I thought they might be recording outside the toilet and the noise yeah. will annoy them. I place it on top of the, on the shelf. It's any banana after all, because it was banana from the previous task that yeah. had gone on my evil Knievel goggles. So I was wiping it. I have to throw that on the back. And then uh, I said, where's the task? And I just couldn't find it anywhere. No, it's not on there. <laughs> <laughs> What's I wonder what they would have done if you had flushed that away. Do you think that would have been the end of your attempt at oh, that task? I'd love that. I'd love it if it brought the whole show down, just because you <laughs> flushed it down. That was that was also the task where you had to try and convince um, you had to try and convince a, wo uh, a woman in a car to take the to yeah. the toilet paper away in her car. What? She didn't look happy. No, I, I didn't realise. I didn't realise till I watched back that she didn't speak. But the subtext of, of what she was saying with her eyes was, yeah. oh, you idiot. I don't know what you're doing, but I don't want to be involved. But and God it didn't really it, change did. much after she recognised you either, because there was a moment where she recognised you, but then she still looked quite annoyed at having to be involved. Oh, yeah. I mean, the recognition just, I think that made it worse. <laughs> like, what do you want, you idiot? <laughs> oh, it's you. I definitely think you're an idiot. <laughs> You know, and then and then she's, I just sort of gave her this. T I mean, don't forget the Taskmaster house; it's quite well hidden. You yeah. Some come, you come bursting out of those gates. You know, it's quite quite frightening, especially if you're dressed as yeah. evil can evil. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Isn't yeah. There? A lot yeah. going on for a split second. It's a man like, dressed as evil can evil. Take toilet roll and toilet drive. roll. <laughs> it's like this is the worst. What's the thing when you go to a bank? Drive off. What's the phrase I'm looking for? Get away. Get away. This is the worst sort of bank job I've ever seen. It's like I've run into a shop, grabbed some toilet paper, got quick, take it, drive. <laughs> I'll meet you at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was three points for you and Mike uh, and two points for Sarah, Jamali and Charlotte, which feel, that feels fair. I think that's fair. That's fairly fair. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fair. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, I'll take that. I've had a little time to think about this, about how ridiculous it is. I mean, how can we possibly know? Because it's, we're still pissing in the dark, aren't we, here? Yeah, but even if you're pissing in the dark, you know roughly where to aim. <laughs> Two minutes left from this section. Oh, have we started? You didn't, that's not fair. 
Task three, record the greatest aircraft safety announcement and then perform the greatest aircraft safety demonstration. Your announcement must be in an accent or language other than your own, and your demonstration must be unforgettable. You have 20 minutes. Your time starts now. Re I would have panicked at this one. This is, I think this is a really hard one. Yeah, and you don't have long. They, you basically got to no. sit there. You've got, you got to write something. You've got a very, yeah. very short amount of time to just write something. Yeah. You know. Really hard. And saying things like greatest aircraft safety announcement and greatest aircraft safety demonstration, these are the ones that made me panic as a comic as well because yeah. the pressure on you then is to do your job that people know you for, but you've only got a certain amount of time and you have oh, to be yeah. good at it. You've got... And, and and they didn't say funniest, they said greatest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, well, what does greatest mean? The greatest because it's the funniest, the greatest because it's... I mean, if you wanted to do the greatest, he's just come out and read out a proper safety announcement. The, yeah. the others won't, so in comparison, it's the greatest. <laughs> yeah, and then argue it in the studio. Yeah, that's really hard. But it also had to be unforgettable. Yeah, but I mean, even, even in real life, outside Taskmaster, you know, have you... No one in the history of aircraft travel has ever said... That was the greatest safety announcement I've ever yeah. heard. Because no one's listening. Yeah. No one is. No one. If they are listening, they just don't want to die. They're not going. That was great. They're just getting the facts in. I think I would have remembered and would be listening if the pilot was an Australian man called Captain Twat Custard. Yeah. Well, you know that's that's why it's the greatest because if that's exactly the point I was trying to make. Yeah. He, he said suddenly thinking of it on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got their headphones on. Everyone, all the kids are looking at the, the PS4 things in their hands, right? Yeah. If indeed you can get them in your hands. And bloke comes at the front. Right, we're going to do a safety act. No one listens. You, yeah. you change that too. And now Captain Twat Custard is going to do a safety act. Everyone looks up. Everybody. Yeah, the, the ears are pricking up at Twat Custard straight away. Oh, my God. You've got, I mean, that's, we're onto something here. Yeah. <laughs> there will now be a safety demonstration by Captain Twat Custard. Right, huh? we've got them. They're looking up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Australian, was that your first thought as soon as accent came up? It's a fun okay. accent to really wrap your mouth around as well. You oh. can really go for it. You can you can go. Okay. And and more importantly, it's not a career ender. No. <laughs> That's the key. That I don't think key. anyone, no one went for a career ender, luckily. D Jamali's uh, French mixed with English with a French accent was lovely. I, I liked that because it's the first yeah. time I've seen him slightly unsure of himself. He's normally Did completely he composed. Pretty, when he first started speaking French, I was like, oh, you're pretty yeah. impressive. You know what I mean? He sounded pretty impressive. It didn't last long before he ran out of words. No, it, it was immediate, I'd say. He just, I'll tell you yeah. what did, did make me really laugh out loud watching it about was Sarah screaming. That was hilarious. Because she the made up language. Up. Yeah. Well, the made up language <laughs> followed by the utter screaming. I think because yeah. I'm terrified of flying. It would be my absolute fear to hear someone screaming like yeah. on the plane. Um, <laughs> That's what, know. yeah, I really, I li what a choice from her to do a made-up language rather than an accent and then to commit to it that much. And was the, lang did the screaming, was that part of the language or was the character scared, do you the think? The character was scared, I think. I don't right, think she was okay. pretending the language she was speaking that <laughs> life jacket is, ah! <laughs> That's not the word for life jacket in that language. In just that pretending. language, yeah. But... That was really funny. That. that made me laugh a lot. That I was great. It again last night, and that made me laugh again. So there it you was go. A, Double it, laugh. only three. Only three points though, because uh, Charlotte. I mean, you can tell she's the proper actor of the group. Oh like, yeah, the, definitely. Yeah, definitely. because it was. I a, mean, hang on, hang me and Sarah are in sitcoms. I, I'm look, sorry. yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Look, I'm, I'm Mike talking. Mike made a career of acting. You, you realize <laughs> you're digging a massive hole. No idea if Jamali acts or not, but you know. You, you, no, it's definitely true that she's she's she's. Yeah, she's proper. Yeah. Proper actor. Yeah, and because it was a yeah. slightly more restrained performance. Yeah. Good accent, and though. She did sound like Lorraine Really Kelly. good accent. Yeah, really good yeah. accent. And very, it went very kids' TV again, the click, yeah. click along with me, clap along with me. I mean, she's, she's just like, had to lean into that now. She reminds me of the female version of Ant and Deck in that it's impossible not to like Charlotte, isn't it? Yeah, completely, yeah. yeah. She's, she's, no, she's so likeable that she could... She could do anything. I mean, she could have tried a career-ending accent and she'd have still yeah. been all right. <laughs> yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, I was a big fan of hers anyway. Um, and then Mike, another secret skill, just pulled German out the back pocket. That was incredible. Yeah, I mean, he's just got a lot. He's got a lot of skills. What can I say? Yeah. He's got a lot of skills. Although, again, he ran out of words, didn't he, quite quick? Yeah, I mean, he was really he was leaning on GCSE German, I think. But I think because yeah. he... 
you realise he does look quite German. He looks like someone from like yeah, a, a he's got that pub face, sign or something, yeah, like a Stein. Kind of, he's got the kind of face that you can say he looks a little bit dot dot dot. I put any word there, and totally. you go, yeah, that fits. Anything yeah. from Parisian to nonce. Yeah. <laughs> No matter what the word is, it will fit the sentence. Mike yeah. Bosnia, he, he really does look, and then any word, suspicious. Yeah, handsome. suspicious, yeah. He, he manages to be beautiful and unattractive at the same yeah. time. How is that possible? <laughs> There's pictures of him with his moustache off floating around the internet, and so handsome, that jawline. Woo, incredible. Yeah. What a guy. And he's a uh, doctor, can save lives. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. got everything going for him. But. I mean, to be honest, if if I had a life-threatening situation, I wouldn't want Mike's ass anywhere near me. I don't want him no. coming anywhere near me. Well, that's why it's so out. good. That, yeah, I'm so pleased about you know. Despite all that, he can't hold it together downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine um, that's I, the last thing you see as you're dying. Mike trying oh, to save God. your life, and then a noise happens, <laughs> and you go, "What was that?" And he goes, "Don't worry, that was not your anus. That was mine." And then you die. An awful way to end it, isn't it? Oh, terrible. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it just says something in German, I'd imagine, just as he slip away. Um, he, uh, yeah, he'd look good in Lederhosen. I think that's my point. Absolutely. Um, so it was five points for the Parisian nonce, uh, four points for Charlotte, uh, three points for Sarah, four points for Jamali as well, and three points for you, Lee. No two points, no one point. I think that's a good way of scoring it because I think everyone invested quite a lot of time and effort into it. It feels quite... A difficult yeah, yeah. task. <laughs> the studio studio task. Now, when it came to the studio tasks, Lee, I think you yeah. seem to really enjoy these when you actually got stuck in and having to, everyone was there and, you know, you got competitive, but you seem to really enjoy the, the feel and fun There's of something those. about everyone being around you. That, that The end task in the studio is the one where you most become competitive. I think it's partly yeah. to do with the fact that you're not, you're not, um, when you're on your own, there's a sort of pressure on to be mildly entertaining as well. Um, the yeah. emphasis is on the mildly before anyone else says it. Um, <laughs> so you're trying to be entertaining because it's just you. Whereas when there's five of you, you think, I'll just crack on and try and win and someone else can juggle. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've got this, someone else can deal with the entertaining bit. I'll just crack yeah. on with this. There's other, we're all, there's five of us on the stage, right? No, you certainly did it this time. You certainly just cra cracked on and won it. Uh, it was the stands on either one leg or both legs. Oh, yeah. You must do so one at a time behind this curtain with your hands on your head. The taskmaster will guess if you're standing on either one leg or both legs. Uh, mm. If he guesses correctly, you're eliminated. Last person standing on either one leg or both legs wins and greg really comes alive for these as well he loves this mm. sort of thing and I'll tell you what, it was that genuinely was a good tense game. it was a yeah. good game that that's a game that i reckon people are now playing at home it's a good Un game unfortunately lee i think you know this you're going to have to be playing it at home soon of course it goes without saying yeah i mean i've given you're never you're never getting life. away from it no, <laughs> but in fact i did i remember coming home that night and the kids yeah. saying you know what did you do and i said oh we did this great game at the end i thought oh why have i said this that was two hours <laughs> i'm not going to bed until i win one <laughs> but there was, um, I had one distinct advantage in that, which was this. When people come on Would I Lie to You, they always, you know, they often say, well, any tips on the lying and the telling? And yeah. I always say just one bit of advice, and that is people often make the mistake of when they're lying, doing it differently to when they're telling the truth. So, for right. example, if they come on and they're telling the truth, they will wax lyrical yeah. uh, because they know the truth. Or yeah. they'll go the opposite way and pretend they don't know any facts yeah. because they're, they're trying to suppress it. And likewise, if they're lying, they think, oh, I better, I better say loads and loads of things, otherwise it looks yeah. like I'm lying. And I just say, don't matter what you do, just do the same for both. Yeah. Right? If you're going to wax lyrical when you're lying, make sure you wax lyrical when you're telling the truth as well. Yes. Yeah. That so makes likewise, sense. Likewise, if you're going to pretend, if you're going to wobble a bit on one leg, make sure you wobble a bit on two. Yeah. Or if you're, not going to wobble at all because you're still on two. Don't wobble at all on one. And that is what I'm going to have on my gravestone. <laughs> if all I brought that. nothing to this planet <laughs> other than how to deceive someone yeah. when you're stood on one, but you want to pretend you're stood on two legs. Admittedly, it's not going to crop up much as a tool. <laughs> but you never know. No, you're, you're quite right. And yeah, I think the way you definitely went about it that way. So the first one you did, you were deliberately 
swaying around all over the place and wiggling yeah. your arms in the air and stuff. And it threw it threw Greg off. You were very you were very very good at this game. Charlotte out straight away, despite what I said about her being the proper actor of the group. Brilliant, she can't act like she's actress. on one leg. I yeah. absolutely genuinely love ghosts. She's yeah, brilliant. it's fantastic, isn't it? Uh, yeah. How can someone that's that good at acting in Ghosts be so <laughs> atrocious at pretending <laughs> to stand on one leg when they're stood on two? She she may as well have just gone, Whoa, I'm actually stood on one leg. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Yeah, really, really dreadful stuff. And even Mike went out quickly there as well. Mike's normally quite good at these. He was very mm. good at the tong, the tong slap marshmallow thing. Um, but he was out straight away. Jamali, three points. Sarah, three points. And you took that home with five points. So another episode victory, Lee. Yeah, so exciting. Just, I mean, just fantastic. Because at that point, you start believing in the dream. And don't forget what the dream yeah. was. I told you at the beginning. Not yet to come. Not coming last. last. <laughs> you start to believe the dream. This really could be my year. I might come second to last. <laughs> That's why I believe. <laughs> surely, that surely that it must. Charlotte's presence must have relaxed you about four or five episodes in. I did realise quite early on that she was perhaps going to. It might be a competition between me and her. Right. About, she she might be the one that stops me. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Achieving but your dream. Then, yeah. Yeah. I just thought. I. I. Yeah. Fancy me chances. So she came bottom this episode again with 10 points. Uh, Sarah, a low, a low score for Sarah um, as compared to her other scores. Uh, Jamali, 16 points. Mike, 17 points. And then you topped it out, 18 points, which means in the series, Sarah is still in the lead, but by a very thin margin, by so someone who's winning so decisively for the first four episodes. Because mm -hmm. uh, you're second in the series, Lee, 123. Mike, 119. Jamali, 112. And Charlotte's there as well. 88. Uh, it's, it, happens in, it happens in middle distance running. People yeah. always make that mistake. Belt Go off the too quickly. Yeah. They're way ahead. They'll never be able to keep this up, they think. And they slowly, the wind blows, the long hair yeah. pulls them back. <laughs> We've got a few emails uh, from listeners, Lee. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to read out those, okay. um, and if you want to answer, you can answer. What um, if I don't? How would that work? Well, let's see. Let's see what Has happens. Happened let's see yet? If I... Has anyone said? Oh, I'm not answering. No. <laughs> no, there haven't been any questions, sort of uh, sensitive or hard hitting. Really, it's oh, very okay. difficult to. Oh, okay, so I haven't heard the podcast yet. He's not going to be like, "Where do you stand on Brexit?" and stuff like that. No, no, no. It'd be a bit of a, oh, okay. a, a bit of a, a swerve. Uh, okay. It's mainly about Taskmaster. Um, okay. There's a, we got a lot of emails about your kids being fans and asking you because oh. I think because you know a lot of your prize tasks have involved your kids as well. This I mean yeah, this yeah. so this one, uh, greetings from Iceland. Uh, this is from Bjarki wow. Hilmarsen. Show me what you can tell you when you're at work. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. This is Bjarki Hilmarsen. Uh, says Lee, uh, watching your performance, I've often been wondering if your kids are beating you up when they watch the episodes with you. Well, um, I, they're not physically beating me up, but yeah. they give me that they may as well be. I'll get the look. I'll get the look and the slight shake of the head. And I can just yeah. go, what an absolute cretin. Are they, yeah. are they impressed with you so far? Do you think it's helped your cred or do you think it's done damage? Oh, it's definitely helped my cred, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm on their favourite show, of course. Yeah, yeah. I'm on their favourite show. But, but you're not ruining uh, their favourite show. They, I, was, I would be worried about that sort of thing if they were like, oh, God, Dad. I, I'm not ruining their favourite show, but bearing in mind how much of my life now is invested in this uh, in this show, or as I call it, this bloody show, yeah. I I would say that it's a bit win-win in it. Because if, yeah. they, if, if I ruin the show for them, the inevitable conclusion to that is that they perhaps stop watching it and, and it becomes yeah. s stops becoming so much of my life in my house. So no longer yeah. will I wake up on Sunday morning going, shall we go for a long dog walk? And the response is, but we can't. We've set it up. That's a phrase we hear a lot. It's already been set yeah. up. What's been set up? You go in the living room and there you'll see 14 bags of flour. And you just go, right, great. I'm going to be tidying up for the next four hours now. Brilliant. Thanks, Alex. That's, That's your great. task. That's your yeah. real task. Tidy up. Um, have you thought of setting like the dog walk as a task? They're not going to, they're going to see through that. They're not going to fall for that. Oh, they've tried yeah. all that. 
I've, yeah. I've tried my own version. So yeah. today's <laughs> challenge is: Can you clean the car in ten minutes? <laughs> and I'll follow you back. Uh, this is uh, from Cass in Darlington. Uh, question for Lee: Who would you choose to be on a team with, Rob Brydon or David Mitchell? Oh, that's a good question. Who would I be on the team with? Do they mean a Taskmaster team? I believe. I believe so. Yeah. Well, if it's a Taskmaster team, I would say probably. Um, I, 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 I sort of want a, the combination of the two. I'd like the ideas of David. But with yeah. the sort of slightly more manual hands of Rob, but I say more manual hands of Rob. That's in comparison <laughs> to David. It's all yeah. relative. They're both fairly <laughs> soft to touch. It's not the first thing I think of when I see Rob Brydon. I don't think manual hands. No, you, 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 when you watch those cruise adverts, you don't go, "Oh, there he is working hard again." <laughs> the irony, of course, he is working because he's getting paid. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, all I can say is, is there any possibility I'm a third option? <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would genuinely hold out for a third option, and I'd get yeah. it, and I'd refuse to do the show until even now I'm getting annoyed about the concept. So yeah, I'm sorry, I refuse to film anything yeah. until you get it sorted out. Is my someone answer. else, please? Yeah, Some, and anybody else, not somebody else, literally anybody. Else. I would say anyone from the planet, apart from two people, is, is my answer, and we know who those two people are. We had a lot of we actually had a lot of questions about. I mean, for for example, uh, Regin from upstate New York uh, wanted to know how you think David Mitchell would would do on the show, given how well you know him. How do you think he would go about completing tasks? Well, I would say that he definitely wouldn't be competitive. Right. I don't think he'd be competitive at the tasks. Uh, I think he would. I think he'd be good. I think he would. I think he'd have quite a logical approach. I think he would, he would, he would more than anybody. I mean, you think I argue about sort of the semantics of, of whether we yeah. really put tape and cling film around your legs. He would bring a lawyer in. <laughs> he would actually bring in a lawyer and he would, he would, yeah, he'd say, cast your mind back. It would be amazing. Get, he would get inside people's brains with the argument. Um, this was a good question, I thought. This is from uh, Ashling. Uh, Will you please ask Lee whether his recent foray into Buddhism has affected his Taskmaster attempt? This, of course, is referencing uh, your podcast, Lee, uh, yes. uh, which is about about Buddhism and yes. your sort of uh, your uh, recent attempts to meditate more. And yes, yes, it's. Um, are you referring to my podcast? I can't believe it's not Buddha. I've, I am indeed, unless there's another Buddhist podcast you're doing. No, no, that's just the one. The yeah. other five got cancelled. <laughs> um, for being too similar to the other one. <laughs> um, well, uh, it's definitely um, definitely makes you calmer, more focused. You know, um, mm. I, I would say if I can get to the end of this series and not come last, I would have to put part of that down to the meditating. Right. Yes. I, I think if you meditate every day twice a day for 20 minutes, mm -hmm. dedicate your life to it, perhaps even go to a Buddhist temple for six months a year in Thailand, you too can spend your life coming second to last. <laughs> That's how much it, it can achieve. Were you meditating yeah. when you screamed, I, I've got a BAFTA with a mouthful of poppadoms? No, no, I, that was my day off from meditation. <laughs> that was very much a meditating day off. Had I, had, I, um, had I been meditating that morning, I would have screamed, whatever. None of it matters anyway, but I hadn't. Yeah. So, you know, but um, a tr here's a true story. I very first time I meditated, this is about six years ago, I, I, I did transcendental meditation and someone comes around, they give you a mantra, you know, and you, I did my first meditation. Now for the year building up to, to this meditation, well, I wasn't building up, but the year before the meditation, yeah. I am obsessed with darts, right? That's my thing. That's my sport. Yeah. And I used to try and get round the board in less than 60 uh, with doubles. Right. So you get three darts per double. Yeah. Right? Can you go round the board on doubles in less than 60 darts? Never did it in a year. Tried all the time. Meditated and did it the first time after I meditated. Wow. Coincidence? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> did you then try it again? Uh, yes, and and and... and yeah, I did try it again and it didn't work straight away, but I'd, I'd done it once and I'd just meditated. Had I yeah. not, I perhaps wouldn't have carried on meditating. 
Yeah. I think part of my brain uh, still believes if I meditate enough, I'll still make it as a professional darts player. Well, fingers crossed for you. <laughs> but no, that'd be a terrible way to throw a dart. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Lee, for coming on the Taskmaster podcast. Uh, at the end of the Taskmaster podcast, we always get our guests to rate their experience on the podcast between one and five points in the style of Taskmaster. Oh. I Feel see. free to be honest about it. Give me as many points as you think this experience deserved. Okay, I'm going to give you zero points. Okay, fair uh, enough. <laughs> zero points. Uh, because f in terms of the fun and, yeah. and, 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 and intrigue and, and entertainment I've had with mm -hmm. you, it's a five. It really right. is. Good, good to but know I that. I always, with any professional job, factor in the money. And yeah. for that, <laughs> I'm giving that a, a minus five. <laughs> and if you work out the average of minus five and five, I think you'll find yeah. zero. It's a big old fat zero. Yeah, yeah fair enough, actually. Yeah. Which coincidentally is similar to the problem with the fee. Yeah. So it seems appropriate <laughs> to give you zero. Yeah, fair enough. But thank you for coming to do it anyway, Lee, despite thank the... Thank you. Uh... And can I say, genuinely, I've, I've not worked with such a nice a bunch of people that I did on that Taskmaster series. It, they were so nice. Well, honestly, all of them. Jamali was hilarious and was, what is he, 14? I don't know. Yeah. He's so young. <laughs> Charlotte is the most likable human being in the world. Sarah is hilarious. She really yeah. is one of the funniest people I know. And, uh, and then the weirdo with the unicycle <laughs> who, who <laughs> emits noises from his anus whenever he wants. Oh, like, German unicycle anus. anus. Yeah, no, doesn't absolutely not. funnier than that. Well, that definitely comes across. It looks like you all had a, an absolute blast. Lee, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Thanks, Ed. Cheers. There we have it. Another great episode of the Taskmaster podcast. I do say so myself. Uh, I am the host of it. Uh, I do say so myself because I'm arrogant. And also, a lot of it's down to the guest booking. So thank you very much for coming on, Lee. You were wonderful, as expected. Uh, we've had all the current contestants on. Uh, next week's guest is going to be the brilliant Margaret Caborn smith uh, who many of you may know from Do The Right Thing, uh, an excellent podcast that she co-hosts. Uh, and she's also a Taskmaster mega fan, so it'll be lovely to chat to her. Remember that Lee's podcast is called I Can't Believe It's Not Buddha, uh, that he does with Neil Webster, and that is on Spotify, iTunes, and wherever you get your podcasts. But for now, remember, watch all the Taskmaster stuff, buy all the Taskmaster stuff, be general good fans. I don't know what that means. Sort of going quite slickly, this one, until that point. Uh, but never mind. You need, to, you need to see that I'm not perfect, guys. Bye! For more Taskmaster, subscribe now! <laughs>